Hi guys, welcome to the video. Um, just a brief one today. We're going to show you the uh, the basics of what you would do uh, when VFR flying between airfields and something called a standard overhead join. So, uh, standard overhead join, it's basically, well, it's sort of in the name, you're going to join overhead the airfield. You've got to have a good knowledge of uh, what the runway is in use, what side of the airfield the circuit's on, and from that you then build a picture of the live and the dead side of the airfield. So we've got runway 21 here, we're approaching at Gamston. Um, we're going to join 2,000 feet above the runway, uh, above the airfield elevation, so about 2,100 feet. Gives us a chance to scout out the airfield, look at any other traffic in the circuit, and then we make our descent on what's known as the dead side. Um, so that's the side of the airfield where there is uh, is no circuit. So right now they're using runway 21 at Gamston, and the circuit direction is right hand. So that means that the uh, the circuit is actually going to be on the uh, west northwest side of the airfield. So as we come in, we're um, we're going to join basically over the top of the field trying to make sure all our turns are in the same direction as the circuit. Come back round to the side that the circuit isn't on and we'll descend down to circuit height. Usually circuit height is about a thousand feet. It can change uh, based on local regulations at particular airports but at this one it's also a thousand feet as we use in the Q&H at about 80 or 90 feet elevation at Gamston. So we're flying an 1100 foot circuit. So uh, as I say, I'm going to join overhead at 2,100 feet. Now, this is uh, predominantly a procedure that you would do at an airfield where they don't actually have any form of air traffic control as such, um, and sequencing in amongst other aircraft is entirely your responsibility. Uh, well, ultimately, obviously, avoiding all other traffic is your responsibility, no matter what, but um, this, this technique allows you to join the circuit and position yourself in such a way that you're not interfering with existing circuit traffic um, and as is the case with uh, the rules of the air the aircraft in the circuit do actually have right of way so we have to make sure we're not going to get in their way or uh, make them have to uh, change direction leave the circuit or go around or such they, they are the ones that have right of way so I've just made a left turn I'm actually in the overhead of Gamston now so what I'll be doing on the radio here would be calling something along the lines of uh, Gamston traffic uh, I've got a very weird reg on here, so I'm just going to say Cessna 172 in the overhead and uh, we'll be turning towards the dead side. Comes to traffic. Keeping a good lookout, make sure you can see any other aircraft in the circuit. We happen to have two here, and uh, before I forget, the other two bits of traffic in the circuit can introduce themselves. Say hello, guys. Hello. Hello. So we've got Jack and uh, Kitty just uh, flying the circuit so that we can see what it's like to uh, to try and fit in with whatever they're up to. So they're going to make the proper radio calls and everything while we're uh, doing the overhead join. So I've gone, I've made a right turn across the runway. Uh, I'm going back to the dead side now. Uh, as you can see, we've got an aircraft over this side on finals somewhere. There he is. And I think Fox, Fox, Fox Strut Hotel Oscar, final runway 2-1, Gamson traffic. Excellent. Yep, that's the one on final, and uh, there is another one somewhere back there. So we're now dead side, so I'm going to say uh, Gamson traffic, Cessna 172 descending dead side, and I'm going to descend down to 1,100 feet while making a slow banked right turn. Now annoyingly, being in a high wing, you actually have poor visibility in the direction of the turn, so what you can do is lift the wing to try and sequence yourself in with all the rest of the circuit traffic so you can actually see what's going on. It's all a bit of a timing game so I can see that he's on the landing roll now uh, but he is doing a touch and go so uh, potentially we have to judge whether or not we can turn in and tuck in front or uh, extend and join him on uh, on the crosswind leg. Uh, right now he's just getting airborne, he's in a more powerful aircraft than us so what we'll do is we'll sequence in behind him and I'm just waiting to get down to 1100 feet. I'm going to watch what he does when he makes the crosswind turn. We'll do the same and we'll tuck in behind him. Uh, at the moment I can't see the other traffic. Gamson traffic, go off, echo, extra, extra, November, short final runway, 2-1 touching go off the Gamson traffic. Perfect. Uh, well there he is, he's on final. I'm going to turn some lights on so that we're a bit more visible. Right. 
there is the Baron, I think it is. Uh, so I'm going to join Crosswind behind him. Bit of a funny uh, turn I've made here, but it's going to take us behind this village. Can't see the other traffic on the runway, but he should be well behind us. There's 1,100 feet. Obviously I'm cheating here a little bit using the external view, but there's the one on the runway, and of course uh, ahead of us, uh, he's just turned off to the right, is the Baron. So you can do your pre-landing checks here. Um, we use the Bumfitch acronym. Um, so very briefly, we're checking that we've got positive brake pressure. Uh, undercarriage is fixed on this aircraft. Mixture is full rich. Uh, fuel is sufficient. Fuel pump uh, is, well, fitted but not required on this in the circuit. Uh, our instruments are all set. Our uh, pressure is correct and our DI is aligned to the compass. Uh, we'll do a carb heat check. Where's my carb heat? Doesn't have one. Maybe it's fuel injected. Probably. Yep, it's fuel injected. Forget that. Uh, hatches and harnesses are all secure and our landing light has now been turned on. Uh, I've got to turn around this square lake. That one over there. And I'm going to align the direction indicator to the runway direction so that it helps me in the circuit. What I'm going to do here is put it on the inbound runway, uh, which is 2 1. So that I know on a downwind leg, all I need to do, obviously in still wind, uh, if I watch my circuit height there, uh, is put the tail onto the heading bug. And I know then I'm flying the downwind leg. Obviously with uh, knowledge of the direction of the wind, you can then add a wind correction to that. Gamson traffic, Golf, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Hotel, Oscar, late down, winter runway 2-1, touch and go, Gamson traffic. It's a very wide circuit flown here at Gamston. Uh, we've got the runway over there. So uh, I can see another traffic is on crosswind just behind me. And of course, while I was yapping away there, Kitty's uh, just called late downwind. So Gamston traffic, uh, Cessna 172, we are downwind, touch and go. Gamston traffic. Sight of that other aircraft. Oh, there he is. So he's on final now, so he's not going to be a problem. Obviously, the person behind me should be keeping an eye on me. Sometimes it doesn't always go to plan, but uh, you know, you just hope that they're keeping an eye out for you and uh, making sure they don't catch you up. So it can be quite dynamic, the circuit. It uh, all depends on what traffic you've got there. You know, if you've got another aircraft doing 90 knots, um, obviously it helps to know the aircraft in question to know that they're doing 90 knots, but you might find that you need to fly a slower circuit so you don't um, actually end up catching them up and uh, having to go around on final. Right, he's actually uh, quite short final, so we're not going to end up catching him up. Hotel Oscar, uh, final runway 2 on Gamson traffic. Now normally wait for the uh, runway to be 45, your touchdown point rather, to be 45 degrees behind the wing before you turn in. Um, but just looking at the village that we've got to fly over now, I'm going to turn here so that we don't cover too much of the village in terms of making too much noise um, while we actually overfly it. So I'm turning base here. Yeah, some traffic off, thanks for November, late down with runway 2-1, touch and go. So I'm going to get to about uh, two to 300 feet per minute. I'm just going to set about 1700 RPM. Again, if you're in a carburetted aircraft, you put the carb heat on at this point. But uh, the carburetor heat is normally somewhere here on the Cessna, so this will be the fuel injected version. I'm going to slow it down to 80 and get the first stage of flap. stage
next stage of flapping and then start the turn onto final. And Gamston traffic, Cessna 172 final touching uh, to land. Gamston traffic. So we've gone a little bit low there, so I'm keeping a speed of 70 knots. Could probably get a bit slower in this thing, but uh, I'm going to push my luck. We go full flap now, which is going to add a lot of drag. Keep it in turn 65, actually. Obviously I've got two red lights there, but um, when you're visual with the runway, you know you're not going to land short. You don't necessarily need to follow those implicitly all the way down. Got effects in a member, final runway 2-1. Just go, Gamson Traffic. Gamson Traffic, Golf, Hotel, Oscar, downwind runway 2-1 to land, Gamson Traffic. Very twitchy rudder pedals right now, so I'm going to need to take the next exit to get out of the way of the guy that's behind me on final, which I think got coming up here. And once we cross the yellow marker, we can let the guy behind us know. Gamston traffic, uh, Cessna 172 runway vacated. Gamston traffic. And obviously we'll taxi to the apron, shut everything down and finish with our checks. Uh, but as you can see, we've just given him enough room there to uh, touch down behind us. All those things like to float, Jack. Well, that's really it, guys. Um, so that's basically the procedure behind uh, a standard overhead join. Uh, obviously, if you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments section and we'll d endeavour to get back to uh, to you on anything that we haven't covered. But hopefully that covers any uh, queries you might have on exactly what the standard overhead join is, why we do it, um, and uh, and how it's actually done in flight. So uh, thanks for watching this short vid video. And um, please remember to like and uh, subscribe. And we hope to see you again in the next one. Thanks, guys.